Yeah, I've been working out. <sighs> so uh, I made this trellis a couple of months ago, and it's huge, but it, it has an ornate quality that I, I saw when I was in New Orleans visiting, and they have a lot of ironwork. And I thought, well, I'm no blacksmith, but maybe I can fake it with copper. So it looks kind of cool, right? Uh, it's turning a bit dark, and also the birds love sitting on it and then disposing of their most recent meal right down it. So <laughs> I'll show you how to clean that up later. Also, I, I tried this technique that I hadn't tried before to get the solder to work. It went so much faster than traditional plumbing soldering. So I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to need to get yourself some refrigerator, refrigerator tubing, flexible copper, in different sizes. This is 3 quarters of an inch and it goes all the way down to little tiny sizes. Like this is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So delicate. And it, it turns a lot tighter in terms of the radiuses that it will achieve compared to this stuff, which, you know, it's a bit tougher to work with. So you'll need that, and you'll also need to get some rigid copper tubing. This is half inch, and I used half inch for the inner stuff and then 3 quarters of an inch for the outside frame. So first thing to do is Draw your design. I just drew mine on a little woody, little bitty piece of paper and um, then transferred it to the table with some water-soluble crayon. But you could just do it on the driveway in chalk if you don't have a big table to work with. And see, look, pretty. I'm making a slightly smaller one this time. It's going to be about five feet by three feet. This one turned out a bit grand for, you know, it's huge, really. So once you've got your drawing designed, you're going to need to start with the arches. That's the hardest part, really. Um, and so you'll get the thicker stuff. And also, a little tip, try not to do the double arch like I did on this big one. It took forever. It was really hard to match those arches. Okay, so to start with, you just... I'm just going to sort of bend this out as big as I think I need it, and then I'll show you how to cut it. So I'm just eyeballing it, but I, I'm going to cut it a bit long, right about here. If you want to be more exact, you can take a piece of string or rope and lay it out on your design so that it perfectly matches the curve, and then just, you know, go along your pipe with the same piece of string and then cut it wherever the string, where, if you put a mark on the string or if, where the string ends. Okay, so this is a, a tube cutter, and it just slides onto the pipe like this, and then you tighten it down, so it's riding on these little rollers. And this is the blade, and watch what happens. Okay, too tight. It should just score it. It shouldn't actually bite too hard. See, so it's made one. Now I'm tightening it a quarter of a turn, and I take it around again. Another quarter turn, not even a quarter of turn, really just a tiny little tighten, and it starts to dig through the pipe. Now, the three-quarter of an inch stuff takes the longest to cut through, but you'll get through it eventually. ta -da! Okay, so now, this has to be straightened to fit this arch. So this side's pretty good already, but here's the trick. It has to go into another piece of rigid copper pipe for the actual side. And it has to do that by through the use of one of these connectors. But the trouble is, with the, the amount of curve that's in that pipe right now, this connector won't go on past about a quarter of an inch, and it needs to go in all the way. So I'm going to have to straighten that out a little bit. And there's a bunch of ways of doing that. And one way is by just taking another piece of pipe and putting it on the edge, like on the end like that, and then straightening it like, like that. Um, but first let me work with the length a bit because it's a bit wacky right now. Wow, okay, so I'm starting to get there with my trellis. I've got the pieces laid out now, and I've got these little connectors happening now. I'm just putting them in place where they're going to go and here's the deal. I wish they made four-way connectors for plumbing pipe, but they don't because it would be highly impractical. But this is a half-inch, half-inch, half-inch three-way connector. Okay, so that works between these three pieces of half-inch really nicely. But on the outside edge, I've got three-quarter-inch pipe 
of the outer frame going to half inch, so you've got to get a slightly different version of the three-way. All right, so I don't know. It, 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 I got to say, it's a little bit annoying just getting the whole thing laid out. But once you have the arch in place, here's the secret. Just make sure that when your arch is in place, you've got one square line going across here, and then you can work down everything under that is going to be equal. So this pipe length on this side is equal to the one I just cut that goes here. That way it won't come out all cockamamie, which would be an interesting look. And if yours comes out that way, like, it's not wrong. It's just not, you know, geometric. Also, if your pipe, which it will be, is sticking up in spots, just use a rubber mallet to hammer it down so it doesn't, so it doesn't want to walk around, because you want it as flat as possible. All right, so I'm going to finish laying these out. Oh, and one other tip is that the, the pipe always has red ink on it, you know, the manufacturer's little specifications. It comes off really easily with a little bit of steel wool. There's nothing like a good screw to settle down an overactive frame. What was happening is the frame was moving around, so I've just put screws in to anchor it all around the perimeter and a few in the middle too. Because look, the, these babies just want to pop open, so the screws ensure that everything is held together. Now, it's time to solder. This is really fun. If you've never soldered before, this is going to be a really momentous day for you. Because, let me just explain first. There is the solder that you, the kind of soldering you do when you're plumbing, which has to be lead free because you're working on water pipes and you don't want to be drinking lead because that's what led to the destruction of the Roman Empire. And so you have to plumb with lead free solder, which is mostly tin and it takes forever to melt. So it goes very slowly. Plus, you have to prep the pipes extremely well. You have to abrade them both inside and outside. You've got to use all kinds of special tools. It takes a whole long time. Go to the stained glass shop. Ask for uh, leaded solder and the flux that goes with it. That's all you need, two things. No abrading tools. And you just get it's, um, I think this one's 60-40. 60 is tin and 40 is lead. You can check it out on the little label. It always says um, the ratio. And this one says lead free. So don't go for lead free. Go to the stained glass shop. Okay, so let me just show you what it entails when you use the stained glass supplies. Dip the brush in. Paint the ends of the pipes. No sanding, it's just so much faster. Just paint the ends of the pipes all three of them, and then paint the in, inside edges of the connector. Very simple. Won't take all day. The first time I did this with the big trellis, I did it the other way. It just took forever. Then slide these babies on. Okay, so come on. Okay, just work with me. I mean it. Where was my strength? <laughs> There it goes. No, I was off. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and now this one doesn't, it's a little bit awkward really, the assembly, I think, generally, but there it goes. Okay, so now I wanna just make sure everything is tight and you might take a measurement. Oh, now that one blew open. Okay, so I'll have to make sure everything's tight, but let me just show you soldering one joint so you get the hang of it really quickly. This one's a little tighter, so I'll start here. This is fireproof, uh, it's something plumbers use, it's a fireproof mat. So you put it against the surface, of, if you're, especially if you're soldering on wood. Then you fire up your torch, which if you've got a self-starting one feels really cool. There's a flow of gas. Now it's lit. Uh, safety glasses. Now I use that solder that has uh, lead in it. And I just have to wait for the pipe to heat up. So I'm gonna aim it on my side of the pipe. And as soon as it's hot enough, I'll be able to touch the solder to the other side and it'll just disappear. But it takes a while to get hot enough. 
Oh, it's gonna go. See that? It just sucks right into the joint. I love that. Woo! Okay, and I'll just see how I hit it again with some extra heat and it makes the little blobs disappear. Try it here. Soldering rocks. Woo! There it goes. Okay, I just have to heat it and it sucks into the joint. Go, baby, go. Okay, cool. So that's all there is to soldering. Now, it's good to hit it with a bit of water afterwards to cool it off faster because otherwise you might touch it. And that's no good. Okay, my copper trellis frame is well put together. Look how sturdy it is. Very good. Help me. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so it's time for the decorative part of the copper work now, the more ornate stuff. And in, in traditional ironwork, they use a lot of C shapes and a lot of S shapes. So like this, C's, I call them C's, so kind of little embryo looking things. And then this is a, an S. And you can make the S as kind of evocative and flowy as you want. I kind of overdid it here, but my idea is to make a whole bunch of S's along this middle section and then do a bunch of C stuff up here. And then down here, I'm going for a kind of water lilies at sunset kind of, well, it's going to be great in my mind. And um, the trick is though, with this stuff, to get them consistent, it takes a little bit of work. So one way to do it is just take a string and do the design that you want, sort of lay it out. Actually, I would be doing it in here because I want the S to fit inside here. And then when you get it just how you want it, right about there, take it over and just mark it with a pencil line that goes all the way around it, like this, so that you can see it from any direction, that you're not searching for it. And then all I need to do is get my coil and lay the string along it to measure it. The, the problem is you could lay the, the um, tubing out flat and measure it with a normal tape measure, but the problem with doing that is that the more you bend the tubing, the more brittle it becomes. So you want to bend it and unbend it as, as, as infrequently as possible. So I'm just going to try to use the natural coils that the, the tubing comes with. So I'll cut this off, then I'll cut a whole bunch of pieces just like it so that I have all my S's. Now, here's the deal though. Once you get to start bending the stuff, you'll find that thicker versions of the re refrigerator tubing are much tougher to work with. Like this one, see this stuff, which is quarter inch OD, outside dimension, is really easy to work with. So you just, you just kind of pinch it along in your hands. Now it's not quite tight enough and to avoid kinking it, you gotta stick it in a little vise, which you probably have hopefully lying around the basement or in the garage somewhere. And you wanna pinch it down so that it forms a nice little, well pinch really, at the end of the pipe. See, it happens very easily, It's now it's pinched. And I can use that to help me tighten up the curl. See, just gently working it around like that. It's so much fun. Now, what gets tricky is going in the opposite direction because the pipe doesn't really want to bend in the opposite direction because it's been coiled up in the other direction. So sometimes you get it, it's easier to kink it in this direction. And I can get a pretty tight S curve. I'm just going to switch ends now. Out of this quarter inch stuff. It's a little bit more natural. But if I were trying to do this with 3 8 or half inch, there'd be no way. It just won't do it. it it'll kink on you every time. So w when you're experimenting with the different gauges of tubing, you'll quickly find out what the limitations are of each size. There, pretty little S. Look, I got them all cut and they looked so pretty. And uh, there's a whole, like I said, did I not say, bulrushes at sunset, or some kind of water flora at sunset uh, going on down here. And you know, here's the thing. I just went to a wreckers, you know, a salvage scrap metal yard and got a ton of this tubing for about 15 bucks. So it, it actually can be cost effective. This stuff was something they had that's actually flattened. It's, wire but it's been pressed so it's more like strapping 
So that's looking kind of pretty. I just want to show you up here, there's a bunch of ways to attach all this stuff like I did up here. See, they're wired together inter on the internal side so that it doesn't look too obvious. And then around the frame, I've used plumber's strapping. Now, what that is, is it comes in bags and they look like this. This is for three quarter inch pipe and this is for half inch pipe. And they're great because you can, I make hardware out of these all the time. Look how soft they are. So you can just change them to whatever shape you want and then use them to fasten, you know, bits of stuff together, like here, for example, right? And then I'm gonna wanna solder that. This one's not quite long enough though, as you can see. So in that case, I would revert to plumber's tape, which looks like this. It's got little holes in it. So you just get the length that you need and just well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like an eight hole piece of tape. All right, and then that should fit around there without any trouble. All right, so for the, for the um, bigger bits you're gonna, that are attached to the frame, you need to solder them. You don't need to solder the wire, but to, to hold them in place while you solder them, you're gonna need some metal pliers and you just wanna clamp them on there and they hold it in place, and then you can flux the stuff and solder it, so it's easy. I'll just slide this baby under here again. Oh, I wrecked it. So I have a fair amount of work to do here, but it's gonna be beautiful. Woo, just like testing a mattress, really? It's really holding together well. See, look, these little bits have all been bound up really nicely with wire. And um, I'm having a little bit of an extra bit of pleasure down here at the bottom because putting these guys together is a bit, a bit challenging. Um, the, the pipe takes a while to heat up. And of course, the solder isn't gonna work until the pipes are really heated up. So you have to get them in position like that, uh, clamp them off, then put the flux on, like so, and let, make sure it's all kind of runny and really gets into the joint. Slime. Okay, and then start up your smart little torch. You're gonna get so handy with this torch that next time there's a plumbing leak, baby, you're there. So I gotta, I gotta heat all the metal up because the solder will just run through if the metal's not hot enough. It just won't happen. Now the flux is bubbling, that's a good sign. These are the thickest pipes and the, and the toughest joint to do because, you know, there's a lot of metal. It just takes a while to heat up. Almost ready. There, oops. Yeah, there it goes. And there it goes. Okay, it's a bit blobby, but it ought to do the trick. I'll test it in a second. Okay, a little bit more of that to go, and then this baby's looking good. So my coffer trellis is almost done. It's very romantical. See, look. Look how pretty that is. See, rushes at sunset, kind of a representational thing on the bottom, if you've got a really wild imagination. And the trick is, to, to make it freestanding, just hammer two pieces of rebar into the ground and then slide the pipe over it. And there it is. Looks like a headboard. You could have, you could go camping with a really classy headboard. Neat, eh? And I love how these little bits kind of bobble in the wind. It's very pert is what it is. So if you want to make your own copper trellis, go for it. If you want to combine wood and copper together, there's an idea. Ian Campbell is an artisan who's, he actually is a, um, he designs sets for the stage, but he came up with this beautiful trellis. See, look, it's an arbor, really. You can walk right through it. And uh, I like to use it as a kind of metal detector in my own mind, but it's not pretty, and it's got copper all along the edges. See, it's really pretty. And then this one, he made this one too. And it also has copper combined with wood. He's a furniture maker and also a wild, avid gardener. So he makes really cool stuff. But it just comes out of your own head. You, know, you just use your imagination. And if, if you don't want to have that black 
finish on your trellis. See where it starts to discolor? Spray it with some pickling vinegar. That's really strong vinegar. And rub it with a, uh, either a cloth. That's not working so great, so I'll just uh, get a scrubby. This will work a little bit better, look. Cleans it right up, good old pickling vinegar. See, it's all clean. It's good for getting the bird dirt off too. The biggest benefit of working with your hands is that you get a little grin on your face because you feel contented. And people make assumptions as to what that little grin is about and they deduce that your life is more fascinating than it actually is, but oh, why ruin it for them? Thank you.